Have you ever had a client who was super copper, compromised hair, and wanted to go to a natural shade? Well, you're not gonna wanna miss this video. And if you're new here, my name is Morella Vanelli, and I'm a hair educator and salon coach, and I'm super excited to get this video started because I'm gonna show you how to do a color correction on somebody with really brassy copper hair, and we're gonna transform her into that dimensional natural shade using all Kenra color. But before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a video. Now let's go ahead and get started. So let me start out by giving you a little background on this model. As you can see, she has some pretty intense copper hair and it's very coarse. So when I was asking her about her two year hair history, what she had informed me was she used to be blonde and this was about eight months ago. So she has quite a bit of blonde going on underneath all of this copper. So the first thing I asked her before even deciding to make a video on this was let's do a strand test and let's see how far I can push your hair. So that's exactly what you're seeing underneath here. And I'm going to walk you through the four different strand tests I did in the back. So that way I can make the best and educated decision on a, what type of lightener I can use, if I can use any, and then B, the entire process of what I'm able to do. So this is, was going to give me a game plan. So strand tests are so important and so underutilized. So right here, what you're seeing on this very first panel on the right hand side, this is no ammonia lightener at a one to two mixing ratio with 20 volume developer. And you can see there's a little bit of breakage on that right side. And then for that middle strand is the same mixing ratio with 20 volume, but with beyond bond lightener. So I knew Beyond Bond was going to be my choice of lightener for this project. And then on the left side, I decided to mix up a brand new rapid toner, which I'll show you in just a second, as well as 8NUA. I wanted to see how much control I could get out of a demi permanent. So first things first, I'm going to use a color remover. This is Malibu CPR. This helps remove any oxidative dyes from the hair in a really gentle manner. And all you do is take one of these packets and mix it up with room temperature or warm water, just four ounces of it to each package. And then you're going to apply this to freshly washed hair. So just a little hairdresser tip. I actually recommend, highly recommend their bottle that it comes with because it has a little shaker inside. And the idea for this is that you need to make sure it's thoroughly mixed in order for it to really work properly. So after I get this mixed up, I'm taking her to the shampoo bowl. This is the very first thing we're gonna do. And I'm going to use a clarifying shampoo. So I'm using Kenra's clarifying shampoo two times onto her hair. And I'm really just focused on the areas that have the most intense copper. So this is not a deep scrub right at the root. This is mids and ends, making sure we're gonna open up this cuticle, swell it up with the water in combination with the clarifying shampoo, and then do a rinse. The last thing you wanna do is aggravate the scalp area because you're gonna be doing a couple applications onto your client. So less is more for the scalp area on this step. And then I'm going to apply the CPR right onto her towel dried hair, process her for 30 minutes. Now you can do this two, three times in a day if you really wanted to. But for this particular client, we had time for just one application of CPR. And honestly, this actually lifted her hair pretty beautifully for one go round and it's giving me a much better canvas to work with so that way I can have ultimate control when using demi permanent. Once she was done processing for that 30 minutes, I took her back to the shampoo bowl, did one more clarifying shampoo. I did not use a conditioner on her because I was going to follow up with a pre-tone. So this pre-tone right here is a brand new rapid toner from Kenra Professional. It's Silver Ash. And I decided to use the Silver Ash because it works best on levels eight and above. So it's part of the rapid toner collection, which I already am obsessed with. And this was going to help balance out a lot of those orange pigments for me before I go in with the lightener. So it just allows my lightener to not have to work as hard. 
Now there are lots of creative uses for demi permanent colors, but what I love about these rapid toners is you can use them as a final toner formula or you can use it in this case, which is a pretty intense color correction where I need something pretty gentle to pre-tone just to kind of help me out here. So lots of great ways where you can use a silver ash shade. It looks beautiful on blondes, a very cool light reflection. But for this particular client, I'm looking to balance out a lot of those really light ends that are still pretty orange. And this is a, one creative way on how you can utilize the Demi Permanent line. So this is what her hair looks like after just five minutes. And again, there is no conditioner on this hair. We rough dried it. She does have some natural texture. Keep in mind, she is naturally coarse as well. So don't confuse frizzy hair with it being too compromised or too damaged. We already did that strand test. I know her hair is going to hold intact when we get ready to mix up her next formula. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm going to be using Simply Blonde Beyond Bond Lightener at a one to two mixing ratio with 20 volume developer. And I decided to use this lightener specifically because of its bond technology. And we can see that she had zero breakage when we processed her with this lightener. So this is going to be my go-to choice. It's also my go-to lightener anytime I'm doing a color correction and I am working with previously lightened hair or slightly compromised hair that can deal with a lightener. Now the next thing I'm going to put in a bowl is this Rapid Hydration Mask Enrich. Now this is going to be my highlight diffuser. So when I have to apply lightener to the top area and the mids, but maybe the ends might be already kind of light, I'm going to pull this conditioner or treatment right on through to help protect. And then in my third bowl, I'm going to mix up Demi Permanent 6 NUA Natural Ultra Ash at a one to one mixing ratio with its dedicated nine volume developer. Now this is going to live right in between each of my foils to help control all of those orange pigments while I'm lifting inside of my foils. So now let's go ahead and get started. Now that my tray is completely set up, I'm going to use her natural parting, which is slightly off center. And then I'm going to divide up what would be her money piece. So it's about two inches or so right on down in front of the ear. And then for the back section, I'm simply taking this as one entire large section. And I'm going to start right on her occipital by taking a pretty dramatic zigzag section. And there is a reason for these zigzags because this is a correction and she does have a little bit of banding kind of going on even from her previous color. I want the most uneven type of highlights possible with the direction of where they're applied and where they're coming from. So this zigzag parting is going to be my best friend for the ultimate diffusion. Now I'm not only going to be zigzagging on the top section, but I'm also going to be zigzagging on the underside. So this is going to give me the ultimate diffusion. And I'm going to use my handy dandy Koo board. You know I love this thing so much because it gives me the tease without the tease. I'm just gonna allow it to kind of push up whatever loose hairs are kind of happening in this entire large slice that I have going on here. And from there, I'm going to take my Beyond Bond Lightener and go ahead and start saturating. I want to apply as much as possible right onto those mids and ends, and I'm taking Taking this line as high up as possible with this coup board here in the way. Now, right here, I'm adding in that rapid hydration mask. So you can see exactly where I stopped applying the lightener and where I started to diffuse into that treatment. So I don't want to apply the lightener directly to the ends at all because we don't want to compromise them. We just kind of want a light little bit of diffusion of that lightener into the treatment. And then I'm just gonna sandwich this right together. And now moving on to the next section, another pretty exaggerated zigzag, and we're gonna continue on right on up through the top. So a lot of this is horizontal, now, horizontal placement is going to give me the softest line possible. And because this is a pretty wide section that I'm working with right in the back, I'm going to go ahead and split this up into two sections because I want a little bit more control. 
Now these foils that I'm using are super helpful as well. These are the Big Papas from Framar. I love them because I am just using one foil and you can just sandwich them up when you're doing something this complex. It kind of actually saves you quite a bit of time. And now this is a pretty good shot of the full process right here. It is a little sped up so you can kind of see. But on this particular section, you can almost tell a lot of those bands that she had going on. And that's the part where I really want to focus on where that lightener is at. So the coup board is really just to kind of take whatever little baby hairs to add that extra diffusion. So you kind of have different pieces that are lightened on the tips and not. So that's really the purpose of it. If I wanted a complete tease, I would hold the board a little further down on the root area and then push up, or you can just go ahead and tease all together for a very specific placement. Now for the rest of this entire application, all of my sections are going to be horizontal depending on where I'm standing next to her head. So for the side section, keep in mind this is going pretty much from the front to the back. So it is horizontal according to my body position. And this is what's going to give you the ultimate diffusion. So even for this back piece right here, this is also going to be horizontal. So your body position determines whether a section is horizontal or not. And Remember, horizontal is going to give you the ultimate blend possible. Now, once I'm on the area where her parietal ridge is at, this is going to be the last sections where I'm doing these teasy lights without the tease using my coup board with these pretty wide sections. So once I get towards the top, I want to go in and do a little bit more of some detail work. So this is really important. And the other reason too, I wanna to mention why I chose this specific type of application is because it is really quick. I was able to do this correction in just six hours, which is pretty impressive considering how much we had going on here. So right here is where I start to take some much more smaller and I start to fine tune my highlights because I want these to look still blended but a little bit more ribbony and I do this by still taking that much more shallow type of zigzag on the top and also on the bottom so I kind of have a smaller sliced zigzag and then I use the dream weaver comb to give me some highlights from that section and still using the coup board, but I'm able to get much more closer to the root area, even though I am gonna shadow her a little later. And I do this for the entire top section. So everything is horizontal, again, according to the placement and direction of where my body is coming from. Now for the rest of the hair, this is where I'm gonna use that Demi 6 NUA, and I'm gonna go ahead and apply it throughout all of the hair that's left outside of these foils. Now the number one question I get asked is what about all of those teasy little hairs that are kind of hanging out? Now you can go ahead and apply your Demi Permanent, that's totally well and fine, but I am still going to shadow her, so a lot of those hairs will get kind of placed in with the shadow root that we're gonna do on her final toner. Now something to keep in mind is when I'm applying the six NUA in between her foils, I'm leaving those ends out just a little bit, especially the areas that are really light. The reason why I'm doing this is because it's going to aid in the dimension that I'm creating. This is going to look like she overall has been getting some highlights done. We have some grown out looking highlights living in between each of these foils, as well as we have that depth that we're adding in by correcting with the six NUA. So we're going to have tons of highs and lows. That's the overall goal. You never want to just have two solid colors onto the hair. That does not look natural. So the more variations that you have of those highs and lows and where the origin of those highlights are coming from, this is what's going to create that really natural and organic look to a natural shade that we're trying to create. So once I got that Demi Permanent on in the back, I went ahead and started on her money piece. Now you're probably wondering why in the heck would I not put in the money piece area or the face frame 
at the same time of the back. And the answer is, is because she has some pretty fragile hairs in the front. So I wanted to make sure that was the very, very last pieces of hair that I would put in. Now for this front hairline, I'm only adding in just two foils. So that's how fragile and she said lots of little broken pieces kind of happening in the front. So this is why I needed the ultimate control. Plus those highlights have been on for a little minute in the back. And again, this is all about control and timing from the front to the back. So if the back is done at any point, I can easily take her back to the shampoo bowl and easily rinse out those back highlights without disrupting what's going on on that front money piece area. Now I add these two foils to each side of her front hairline and I'm also applying that six NUA in between the foils. So again, this is all about control and it's okay sometimes to work in different spaces or quadrants on the hair when you're doing a color correction, especially one like this. Knowing how fast or slow you work or what areas need a little bit more of your attention is key when creating a game plan for your application. To finish up this application, I'm adding in just a few highlights and I'm leaving her very front hairline out because she has lots of breakage and little baby hairs. So I added this into a slice, if you will, with just six NUA and Demi. And I decided to do this just so that way it keeps the color away from her face. So this is just a really easy and quick tip to do. But overall, I'm adding in just seven foils right here around the face. And then I'm going to process her for about 20 minutes. And I'm just going to keep an eye on each of these foils as they're processing. For my final color melt, I'm going to be mixing up two different formulas, 6NUA and 8NUA. So both of these formulas are going to be mixed up one to two with its dedicated nine volume developer. I'm applying in vertical sections because I like the type of blend that I get. And I'm also bringing that 6NUA down right where the highlights start. So you can see how rooted they are in the back and how much blend we got. I'm actually very excited about this final end result. And then I'm going to blend that right into the 8NUA after combing this down just a little bit. Now, the reason why I chose 6NUA is because... A, that's the color that we used in between each of the foils. And B, I'm working on controlling a really strong level seven copper. So the 6NUA is going to 100% do the trick. Now, the reason why I'm combing this down just a little bit and then blending in that 8NUA is because I want to blend those two formulas together so I have a nice graduation from a six right into an eight. So anytime you have a lot of strong orange pigment or lots of brassy hair that you want the ultimate coolness from, eight NUAs are going to do the trick. But that's not to say that I didn't use that SA Rapid Toner to kind of help me out along this journey because I was dealing with some pretty intense copper hair. I did decide to leave the very front hairline out for last, but Overall, you want to make sure you are thoroughly saturating your Demi Permanent using the comb in combination with the brush and your hands so that way you make sure you're not going to have a spotty finish when you're applying your Demi Permanent hair shade. Now I went ahead and processed her for a full 20 minutes and then I took her back to the shampoo bowl and shampooed her out with Lux shampoo and then layered in the rapid hydration mask in rich just to kind of bring it all together. And then I'm going to style her. This is like my favorite part because you get to really admire all of the work that you did in those last six hours. I start by layering in one of my favorite products because A, it smells good and B, it speeds up the blow dry time and that is the blow dry spray. So that's the very first thing I apply onto the hair and then I start to kind of rough dry it just a little bit and then I layer in another one of my favorite products that's been lately, which is the smoothing blowout lotion. This is perfect for somebody who has pretty curly, frizzy curly hair that needs to be smoothed out. 
From here, I continue on rough drying it until it's about 80 to 90% dry. And this is where I like to use my boar bristle brush to go in and smooth this type of hair texture. And I work in a horseshoe sections just to kind of blow dry that front hairline because I love for my clients to be able to see their hair before we continue on blow drying the back. And I always finish with some form of heat styling. So this is where I'm going to layer in the silkening heat cream. Now, I love this product and it is marketed for people who love flat ironing their hair, but I also love it for some really large waves. And I just apply this to the mids and ends and anywhere where heat is going to be applied. And overall, it gives me the thermal protection that I need. And it also helps reduce a little bit of frizz, which is why I love it so much, especially when doing large waves or curls or a flat iron. To finish up our style, I'm using the anti-humidity spray and this is gonna help with the frizz and it also helps with static if you tend to have staticky hair. And here is the final result of this color correction. Like I mentioned, this took a total of six hours. We have a huge improvement here. Got rid of all of that copper and orange hair. The banding as well as kept her length. We actually did not trim her hair, not one little bit. And we were able to keep the length and the integrity. And here's a little side by side. You can really tell the difference right here and how copper and how much more of a natural shade we got. So let me show you what happened under the hood. We got a ton of great blend. We have dimension, we added depth, and we also added some highlights. So right here is where we did all of those strand tests. So you can really, really see on the underside, all of the details, and the formula, everything that was mentioned in this video will be found in the description down below. I hope you love this as much as I do. So I really hope you enjoyed this hair tutorial and if you did, please give this video a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe and comment down below what your favorite part of this entire tutorial was and I'll be sure to respond. You can also find me on my other social channels like Instagram, Facebook and TikTok all under Morella Minnelli. And if you want free education sent right to your inbox, be sure to head on over to morellaminnelli.com and sign up for my newsletter. If you enjoy listening to podcasts, be sure to check out my podcast called Hair b, &B. It's a podcast all about your hair, beauty and business. And if you're a hairstylist or salon owner that wants to learn all about social media, monetization, brand deals, and so much more, be sure to check out Beyond the Chair Mastermind. It's a monthly group community coaching session for hairstylists where I help you elevate your beauty biz. And if you want more behind the scenes of what it takes to make these videos and get early access to all of these YouTube videos, be sure to check out my membership site right here on this channel. And super exciting news, I just launched the Ultimate Toner Guidebook. It's a step-by-step -step guide to learning everything about toning, super simplified, plus it has 150 plus of my favorite toner formulas. All of the links to everything I mentioned is down below in the description. And if you wanna be a model for one of these YouTube videos, be sure to check out the model signup form down below. And finally, be sure to share this video with a friend and be sure to check out my other hair tutorials right here on this channel. And I will see you in the next video.